In this video we'll look more closely at the Bloodhound Mark II control console. The console had the dual purpose of missile section operational control and controller training. It consists of the upper switch panel, the lower switch panel, the instructor's display and keyboard, the technical supervisor's display and keyboard, and the engagement controller's displays, keyboard and tracker ball. The section state of readiness is controlled and indicated by the upper switch panel. Simulator and operational modes are controlled via the lower switch panel. The panel also houses the communication controls and the fire button. The instructor's display pages were used to create, run and review realistic training exercises. The exercises generated displays and sounds that would appear under operational conditions from early warning to completion of an engagement. Raids of multiple targets employing realistic attack manoeuvres and jamming tactics could be simulated. The technical supervisor's engineering pages cover weather and site data. These had a bearing on the pre-launch calculations and were adjusted daily. Missile and launcher status. Here showing eight missiles running up. Overall section status. Definition of missile engagement zones. Blocks of airspace where targets meeting defined height, track and speed criteria were fair game. Definition of no light zones. Positions where the radar should not dwell, typically adjacent buildings. Here's the missile and launcher status screen once again, now showing 8 missiles run up. The engagement controllers exercise control of the missile section via an illuminated keyboard, tracker ball, two displays and controls and indicators on the upper and lower switch panels. This clip shows the engagement controllers radar data and jamming assessment displays as a target is acquired in search mode. There's a great deal of information present on these two screens. We'll look at the main points only. The lower part of the search display is a graphical representation of the radar aerial position. Here a 30 by 5 degree sector is being scanned. The green paints indicate where a non-jamming target has been seen by the radar. The upper part displays radar status and any interlocks in red that are inhibiting firing.
Here the target has been partially acquired and bearing range and height are indicated. The search display is replaced by the plan position display after full acquisition. The P display shows radar status and firing interlock status. Radar bearing elevation and range scales. A plan position display showing target position relative to the missile section. The target marker shows the target's current position, while the vector indicates its track and calculated position at interception. Bearing range, height, track and speed are displayed next to the target vector. The jamming assessment screen displays the characteristics of any jamming signals received from the trapped target or its escorts. By adopting suitable countermeasures, the EC could engage targets in even the most severe jamming conditions. The primary indicators are jamming and signal to noise levels. If the levels are too low, the missile receiver could not acquire the target after launch. Traces showing the jamming levels received over the last 30 seconds. The jamming centre display showing the position of any offset jamming aircraft relative to the track target. A Doppler trace showing the target echo and any jamming signals received. TTI, the calculated time to interception. That concludes this brief look at the control console. In the next video, we'll see a complete simulated engagement. Thank <laughs> you.